Good afternoon. My name is AJ Cognati. I'm a product manager for Nginx. And in this session, I'll be speaking about microservices patterns with Nginx first and how they relate to the Istio services mesh architecture. Uh, this is a bit of a loaded session, and I do have a demo at the end to show you how Nginx works within a Istio infrastructure. So I need to pray to the demo gods. I think, uh, have you guys seen any other demos? Or am I the first one? Oh my gosh, all right, so I have to pray really hard for this one. Uh, so I'll try to cover as much as, uh, and pretty much I'll try to split the conversation into two, have 15 minutes with, with the marketing material, and someone, I'll provide a bit of a background in terms of uh, who the company is, and what are some of the reference architectures we built for microservices uh, infrastructures, and then uh, the demo. So um, how many of you are Nginx users? Show of hands. All right, well, I guess, I hope not to bore everyone here and may, may be interesting. So first slide, it's all about what Nginx the company is. For those of you who don't know, Nginx has been around for quite a while. It started in, before 2004 when our um, founder and CTO, Igor Sisoev, tried to solve the C10K problem, which was the ability to improve the number of concurrent sessions for a web server. At that point, web servers could do maybe in the hundreds of web server connections, concurrent connections. With Nginx, he was able to bring that number to tens of thousands. So he opened the first version of that in, um, to, he open sourced it in 2004. Fast forward about seven years, clearly it was very well received by the community and uh, he could no longer manage the ecosystem on his own. So him and a couple of his uh, friends, they got together, they created a company. The company was called Nginx Inc. Now, if you see what, two years later, after they've uh, created a company, we built a commercial product, which is called Nginx Plus, which helps us keep the open source going. It's worth mentioning that around 80% of our functionality that we're building even today goes into open source first. Hence, this is, it's great to be part of this conference. Whatever I'm gonna be presented today is gonna to be open source. If you fast forward to today, Nginx is a globally distributed company. We are backed by first class VCs, NEA being one of them. We have offices all around the globe. Our headquarters is in San Francisco. Our offices are in the UK, in Ireland, Moscow, and Singapore. We have over 1,200 commercial customers, and our technology is driving over 330 million sites. So as a follow-on to that, it's really interesting to note that around 40% of all AWS instances, sorry about that, it didn't show that, our uh, AWS instances are powered by Nginx. And if you look at the trends, we are still growing company. About 62% of the top, top 10,000 Websites are actually running Nginx. We also lead the charge on the top 100,000 websites, and we're actually gaining on the top 1 million websites. We anticipate that around 2018, we will be over 50% of top 1 million websites. So you may be asking, what helped us gain such tremendous momentum in the marketplace? Because it's one thing to have a, a small footprint infrastructure, but some trend has to be shifted in the market. So we believe that the trend was really the adoption of microservices. So if you take a look at what's happening in the market, Nginx is very small footprint, it's fast, it enables you to scale up horizontally quite rapidly without actually using a lot of resources on the system. And the market recognized that we are the top downloaded container on Docker Hub in terms of number of pools and also the number of stars. But the microservices are really, the infrastructure itself is changing. If you see what's happening in the marketplace, first it was the packaging, portability, and the ability to share containers across ecosystems. Docker has done a tremendous job covering that. As a second part of that, it's, it's really the orchestration aspect, where you have to take the containers, you distribute them across the ecosystem, and then you need to stitch them together into applications, microservices-based applications. I would argue that Kubernetes has done a, an outstanding job in building a solid orchestration can, that can spray containers across the ecosystem. But then 
those containers, the orchestration alone, as you guys know, because you're part of this conference, is simply not sufficient. You have to build a tremendous amount of custom tooling in order for you to stitch the applications together, in order for you to run a CI CD pipeline, run multiple versions side by side, in order for you to monitor that ecosystem, and last but not least, in order for you to secure them. And all that has to happen in a dynamic context. So this is where the services mesh comes in. It enables you to stitch those services together. It enables you to provide a high level of security, enables you to monitor them effectively, and it enables you to be able to break down multiple applications running side by side through this ecosystem. So Nginx has been offering various microservices architectures in order for vendors to move from a simple deployment, maybe a legacy deployment, where they have just one egress load balancer to more sophisticated deployments where you actually care about the east-west traffic. So let me take you through the progression. So initially, we've deployed the proxy model. So maybe I should ask before I go forward, how many people are actually familiar with some of the ref reference architectures that Nginx has been pitching for the last several years? That's pretty good. That's quite a bit of a show of hands. So proxy model, it's probably the simplest of the three, of the four that are here. It enables you to deploy an Nginx instance at the egress, and in this case, you probably only deal with traffic that comes into your network and goes out, goes out of your network. You allow the services to communicate with each other, so you don't really get in the way. In the ingress proxies, it's more like if you, are, if you have an edge load balancer as an F5, and you're not happy with the way that's, that's working out for you because it's very hard to make changes to it, then we see customers are actually taking Nginx, placing it in front of, a, in front of an FI load balancer, and enables you to actually stitch out workloads based on application, work, uh, application payload. The second is the router mesh. If the router mesh is where you're taking a monolithic application, you're, you're, trying to, you're beginning to peel it off into microservices. In that case, you end up in a situation where you have different environments working together. Maybe half your network is working in, half of your applications are actually VM-based, and the other half, you're moving into microservice. Then in that case, you will have an ingress load balancer that handles the traffic, and then you spread the traffic inside the microservice for, for management. For instance, if you have a Kubernetes environment running side by side with a VM environment, you can split the traffic on the ingress side and stitch together an ingress controller in the Kubernetes environment to do the dispatching of your applications in the, in, in the ingress controller of Kubernetes. Now, the third iteration into this, it becomes when you are really interested not only in the north-south traffic on the ingress side and simple Kubernetes deployments, but you're interested in managing the traffic in between services themselves. In this situation, we are recommending the fabric model where you are deploying an Nginx instance on every one of your microservices, and these Nginx instances communicate with each other and also with the service discovery protocol, so it enables to stitch together services very much like Istio is doing, but without a control plane. Now, the fourth iteration of this is where Istio comes in. You are, it's the same fabric model with the ability to stitch together services, but also with a control plane. And the conversation, the whole um, presentation today, it's gonna be around services mesh going forward. So in the services mesh, if it is for you to take a look at what happens under the hood, you have a control plane, as was described in various other sessions today. In the control plane, you, are, you have three components in the Istio control plane itself. You have uh, the pilot, you have mixer, and you have auth. So it, it really enables you to provision the services mesh data plane, and enables you to monitor it, and enables you to secure it. So that's, since that's pretty well described, I'm gonna spend most of the time looking at the, at the services mesh on the data plane. On the data plane side, you actually do have two implementation choices when it comes to the services mesh data plane. One is uh, service, proc uh, service itself plus the proxy in a container, where you deploy an, an Maybe a product such as Unit, which we announced back in, back in September. Unit actually enables you to run workloads within the same container that the services mesh is happening across. So in a sense, you're deploying just one element in your network. You don't have to deploy a sidecar. And the second implementation pattern, which you're gonna be describing here, it's when you run the service and a proxy side by side in a sidecar-like environment. So what have we done at Nginx? 
So we are, we had uh, various, as we said, we have four patterns that we've, uh, we've recommended to our customers. And the last one is the one that actually comes with a control plane that you can manage yourself. Instead of building a lot of custom toolings, you have now the option to deploy Istio and deploy Nginx and the, as the services proxy. So in the demo that I'm gonna show is we're gonna be using Nginx as a sidecar proxy instead of the standard proxy that comes with the Istio environment. And some people actually asked us, there are mainly the non-Nginx users, why are we using Nginx as a sidecar proxy? Well, there are several reasons why. Number one is it's battle tested. It's been around for 13 years. It has a lot of use cases that we've, we've accomplished. It has powerful configuration directives, over 650 of them. The current Istio implementation exposes some of the patterns, but there is a lot more to be done. And we're gonna be showing you uh, how the configurations are stitching, are stitched together within a services mesh. We have also a highly programmable interface we are able to easily add Luau, and you're able to add NGScript in order for you to program the proxy itself. And least but not last is, uh, I mean, last but not least, is the strong community backing with many third-party modules. And in the demo, I'm gonna show you one of the integrations that we've done with Zipkin from our partners at Lightstep. In terms of the architecture, what does the implementation look like? This probably looks pretty familiar to you. It's really the Istio control plane running with an Nginx sidecar proxy. So instead of actually deploying Envoy, you'll be deploying Nginx in this case. We wanna make sure that what we do is stays compatible with, with Istio adapters. So it's pretty much transparent, except for the installer that's gonna bring in a sidecar for you. The whole thing should look pretty much the same way from the user's perspective. We wanna be as transparent as possible, so the sidecar injection should happen just as it would through an Istio deployment. And then we, want, we have support for rules for various policies, MTLS, monitoring and tracing. In terms of the architecture, as we mentioned, the, we, are, we have, it's a transparent proxy, the proxy implementation, so the way this is being implemented, we have an agent that is deployed together in our, with, the, with the Nginx container in a sidecar. The agent does a translation from auth and from pilot, and generates those Nginx configuration files. And you can deploy Nginx as an HTTP proxy as well as a transparent TCP. And then we build a pluggable module that actually has been written in, in Rust and it communicates with Mixer. So we're able to sell the telemetry information so you can digest in the same way as you would have done it in a, in a, in using uh, Envoy's proxy. There, there is one roadmap item which some of you have already requested and we've taken note of, which is gRPC. gRPC should be released, it's, right now it's in preview, but should be released to customers in Q1 2018. So another thing that I believe that's very important with regards to this, um, this is an open source project and you can visit it today at github slash engine mash. I mean, this is the code name, the project name for it. It has various components. Yeah, engine mesh is actually the core component. It has an agent that runs, so you can make modifications to it if you'd like to augment it with additional directives. Right now it does a bare bones installation, enables you to run Envoy as if you would with, with, with uh, enables you to run uh, Runan Istio as if you would with Envoy. It's beta quality, it's, to, it's, uh, it's compatible with uh, Istio 0.2.12, and uh, we encourage you to participate. We're looking for, for contributors. We're looking to address some of the use cases you may have that you'd like to see Nginx running with. So now it's uh, time for a demo. Okay, that's another shift. Did it work? No, that didn't. There we go. Okay, so what I've done is I pre-staged this environment with a couple of things. First is, let me go to the top. I have a, uh, a demo script to keep in check. Let me show you what I'm gonna show you today. So we're gonna install Engine Mesh Initializer in order for us to swap the default proxy. 
We're going to deploy Istio as a demo app, which is, if you've seen the Istio presentation, it's really the same demo app. We're trying to make sure that we're compatible, so you're going to see how everything, what, how things are happening under the hood, but running the same application. We'll examine the Nginx sidecar. Without traffic, all traffic to R1, we only want to run use case now to save time. And we'll also demonstrate monitoring with uh, Grafana and Prometheus, as well as Zipkin. So there are a few things that I've done before I got started is I've actually downloaded Istio, zero dash, I mean Istio dash zero dash two dot, dot two dot twelve and engine mesh from our uh, from our engine mesh repository. And I also installed Kubernetes. So let's see. It shouldn't be anything here, but I want to make sure the command comes up. Okay, there are no resources found. Let's take a look at the AMP space. As you may observe, it's a default installation. It has uh, namespace default where our application will be running. It has Istio systems, and let's take a look at that. So this is a, an installation, a French installation of Istio, except for the installer, which I'm gonna do separately. You have uh, Istio, certificate related stuff, egress, ingress, mixer, pilot, and you also have Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring, as well as Zipkin, which currently runs independently. It has not yet been integrated into mixer, so we're gonna run it as such. So let's go ahead and, and follow the first step and install ng-mesh installer. So what this has done is it, it tells Istio that it should install Nginx. Let's take a quick look at this file. So what it does is actually it tells uh, Istio that it should install Nginx, which is engine mesh for us. It should pick it up from Docker repository and install that as a side, side proxy. Clearly you have two images, you have the init and you have the debug. For this uh, demo, we're gonna be using the debug. Okay, so that's the only change you actually had to make before installing the book info app. Pretty much everything else should be transparent, it should be compatible with what uh, Istio does today. So let's go ahead and, and publish the book info app. Book info. Cube. So what this does is it goes ahead and provision the pods. Take a look, they're currently running. That was pretty fast. So what you may notice is that uh, each of these uh, pod is actually running two containers, details, and just in terms of the overall structure of the book info app, maybe I should run it to see what it looks like. So before I do that, I have to figure out what the IP address is. Get. Get service. So it's 35, 64. Oops, it's product page. So this is the book info app. And if I go ahead and refresh, I should see different type of reviews. So this is version one, version two, and version three. So this allows you to have a little bit more context in terms of what's, hap what's happening here. You have, a, uh, you have various pods, and then you have one details pod, one product page pod, one ratings, and three versions of reviews. So let's take a look at the product page. What does it look like in the container? Cube uh, control, uh, describe, pod, product. Hey, okay. oh. Let me copy paste this, it's gonna be a little bit faster. So if you take a look at what's happening in that container, 
you have two containers. You have the product page where the business logic is really. For, this is the, the service logic for the product page itself. And then you have the Istio proxy. This is the engine mesh proxy which we're currently running. So let's go ahead and navigate into the, into the uh, container. Istio proxy, hash bin slash bash. Okay, so we're inside a controller. Now we're running, process, you can see, as you can see, that the Nginx processes are currently running. You have a master node and you have the worker nodes. If you take a look at the config file, the configuration file has several things in it. One is loadable module for the mixer configuration. This is the Rust model module which I described. And then you have open tracing for Zipkin that has been done by the lab staff guys. So if you are looking into the, for those of you that are familiar with the HTTP uh, building block, you have open tracing on and a bunch of open tracing configurations. And then you also see mixer, mixer server configuration. All these changes have been pushed down to us by the pilot. The agent has digested and created this configuration file. And one, more la one last thing, this is just a very high level. And then we are ingesting configuration files for the ingress and ingress ports. And let's take a look at that. Oops. Okay, so by convention, there are two type of, uh, there are various files out here, and some of the files are actually for internal consumption by Istio. But the files that are interesting for us is, is the files that are managing the book info app, which actually happens to run on port 9080. So by convention, everything that has to do with ingress ports is gonna have an IP address, the IP address of the pod, and port 980. So if you look at that, you look at HTTP 10.36.2.31, and you see that it has an, an upstream which, it, which actually serves the information from the sidecar proxy into the local host port 9080. And this is, it's listening currently on a port that is provisioned by Istio, in, uh, in the IP tables to actually to push information to the local host at 20,007. And then it has the mixer configurations that have also been pushed by pilot and we've actually configured them automatically. Okay, and then the other one, the egress part. If you see here, every of, every of the services, so if I do listen, if I look at listen primitives, you're gonna see that we're gonna have multiple server blocks, one per details, one per product page, that's the default server, one per ratings, and one per reviews. And on the review side, the configuration file that has been set has an upstream, and the upstream is, is auto-generated. Oops. And the upstream, you see that you have three reviews. So this is the reason why, when actually, when I've done reload on the reviews page, you see that uh, you're seeing three reviews pages, not one. Those are the directives in Nginx that are controlling that. So if I do this again, see they have multiple reviews, version one, two, and three. So let me go ahead now and change the reviews to push everything into one, into one single review, version one. So if I, I can do that by running Istio control. Istio. Uh, samples. Book info. Cube. Route. All to VM1. Oops. Oh, of course. I need to create. Here we go. Now what this has done, if you take a look at what happened in Nginx, if you reload this file, you see that the out and the upstream has been modified now and it only passes one IP address and port number. So if you go back to the application itself, now you can see that I can do multiple type of refreshes and only version one is being shown. 
Now, if you go ahead and change this again and remove the route rules, oops. And I reload the file again. So what I'm trying to display here is that, what I'm trying to show here is that Istio passes the information as it would through a normal channel, and Nginx picks them up, and it does it, it creates its configuration files really transparently, so you don't have to make any other modification in order for you to swap out the default proxy with the, with the Nginx proxy. Now, as you saw previously in the demo, I've actually provisioned Grafana and provisioned Zipkin, so I'd like to show how they operate. But in order to do that, I'm gonna start Uh, I have my cheat sheet here because uh, I need to open the local port. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open local port for Grafana. So since it's been running in the background, I would expect to see already some graphs. This has been deployed in the, in the Istio configuration file. So I pick the Istio dashboard. Here it is. You see graphs showing up. So if I refresh the page a few times, just to show that this is real, I didn't just make them up. You should see a spike in the graphs. Here we go. You see the graphs coming in. Okay, an extra credit. Let's see what a zip can also works. Once again, I open the port in kubecon, control, zipkin, find traces, and here they are. Now you can trace the traffic, you trace the packets that are moving all the way in from the ingress side, all the way in through the system. So you can find out whether you have any delays or anything else. So that's pretty much it from the demo side. Um, let me move back to the... Moving down to the presentation, once again, this is, uh, it's open source, it's beta quality, and we would love to have your input. So that was all that I had for today, and I'm opening up for questions. <laughs> okay. That right now, the goal, so to restate the question, what, is the, what are the things that uh, the NGMesh does that the default proxy does not provide? The goal for us was to keep everything for backward compatible, meaning that I wanna, we wanna make sure that whatever we do in NGINX doesn't break anything that Istio provides for us. So we, would try, we try to stay in par. So at this point, it doesn't do things differently because there was never a goal. Moving forward, now we want to start exposing NGINX directives such as uh, single sign-ons, caching. We have several dozen third-party libraries, and you've seen one that was with Zipkin. We want to expose a lot of others. But we need to do that in a way that's compatible with Istio. So we need to provide it. We need to start mapping it at the top level and then building it down to a system. And that requires some code changes. So if you're interested in some of that and you have, you'd like to accomplish a use case with, with Nginx, we're more than happy to, uh, to take your feedback and build it out. At this stage, we do reload the config updates, but we are very tactical, meaning that if all we're doing is actually changing the upstream, we actually can do it through the API. But we are, keep in mind, NGX, the way it operates, it reloads the configuration, it does a soft reload, and therefore the workers will continue processing traffic, and we can decide how quickly we should age and how aggressively we want to age those workers. Does that answer your question? It's a soft reload. Yeah, go ahead. Did you have to make any changes to Istio Pilot to enable this work? Did we have to make any changes to Istio Pilot to enable the work? Yeah. No, we did not have to make any changes to Istio Pilot. We have actually were mapping the commands that are coming to us through the agent, and then we create our configuration files that way. Thank you. Could you please repeat the question? I don't think I understood it. Oh, so the, the ACLB is adding end user authentication on the 
JWT authentication. We, I, I, I mean, I have the architect who built it here, so maybe, maybe his, maybe it's it's one of the roadmap items. Uh, go ahead. Is it possible to build PLS channels in between? Like MTLS channel, transparency for services, like all the... MTLS, so that I know the answer for. That's a roadmap item for us, and it's really depending on the gRPC code that is going to come in in, Q, in Q1 of next year. We're actually we're running some trials on it, so we should be able to do that in Q1 of 2018. And will it be available in open source? Or in yes, it will be available in open source. Everything you've seen today is really open source. We haven't used any type of Nginx Plus uh, functionality. So the containers are running Nginx. Uh, so another question. For example, if I use uh, Messenger, uh, can I use the Nginx server for the application? So Passenger application, if you're integrating Passenger application, it should be Passenger application should be pretty much transparent because as you've seen, when we are, if you have a Kubernetes file, a YAML file that you're trying to push, just like BookFinfo would be, you push it in and Nginx will digest it, will create a configuration files for you so you can run it transparently. In a sense, it's gonna stitch up uh, the security channels as well for you. So if you have multiple, uh, multiple services, they'll communicate with each other just as if it would any other Istio app. Yeah, please. External, oh, okay, oh, I got it. So part of the, part, you mentioned that part of the, the deployment, I have the, I looked at the service to pick up the IP address. Yes, that is something that, we are running this all in Google Cloud. So it's provided by, it's, everything is done live. I mean, it's an environment that we set up. It's visible, you probably can write the IP yourself. So it's, it's provided by Google. Okay, go ahead. How difficult was it to write, I'm sorry? Mix a, mix a client and Rust? Uh, I would say it's taken us a few months, so it wasn't a, it's not a simple exercise. You're free to take a look. It's, it's an open source, it's an NGMesh. You can open it up and see oh, here is the architect. You can have a, an offside conversation with him. He, he's the one and, and a, a small team with Michael and a few other people have, are the ones writing it, so. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here.